The boat is an absolute mess. So another job for me in my head torch. I've got to find the little rat runs where the uh, this wire goes. I just, I literally need another arm. I don't understand what he's trying to get me to do. <laughs> One brush. of the more glamorous sides of uh, the river the boat. Brush up, brush up, brush up. <laughs> this is my little uh, sanctuary. All right. Now I'm going downstairs to start yelling at stuff. Yeah. Either you are like really incompetent, which I know that you're not, or I just did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really hate these jobs. The boat is an absolute mess. <laughs> um, despite the fact that, you know, we've been here for over 24 hours now. We got everything cleaned up and now we have to take everything back out again to do all the work that we need to do. And um, the work we need to do essentially involves cleaning out the floor cabin. We always have people coming up to the boat and saying how pretty she is and asking about her. Always. Lovely. Um, yeah, we need to clean out the floor cabin. Desperately. That's essentially our entire to-do list. Chores this morning, because we live on a, a relatively small boat, we tend to find different areas to work from. Now, option Teresa today is, uh, what are you doing to them this morning, my love? I'm going to continue the cleaning operation. Today's job is this, actually, and I'll show you this, because most boats don't have one of these. This is the keel control for Southerly. Now, Southerly's being lifting keels or swing keels. They have uh, a little computer that allows you to adjust the height of the keel using a hydraulic ram and it's a, a sealed unit but after eight years ours started to not work every time we pushed it today is fitting uh, a new keel um a keel switch and i hope that there'd be some sort of like nice plastic four-way plug that would just be a question of removing four screws and plugging a new one in but no i've got um wires now that is what you call a decent that's what you call a steering mechanism yes what is that called steering ram this no the whole the whole bit the, the whole thing so no it, what do you call it answer down below it's it's part of the steering the steering mechanism i mean literally that there's a series of articulated joints on the wheel that come down here to this this is a <clears throat> this flange and then there's a rose joint here so basically this the wheel turns and then this pushes that back and forward it's literally just yeah, no, this the, the steering steering linkage steering linkage part of the steering linkage system okay anyway that's not what you're focusing on today is it no it is not what are you doing i've got to climb up into the into the guts of the boat <laughs> But for those of you that are interested in how the inside of a southerly is put together. And who wouldn't be? Why would you not be? Eh? For those of you who know southerly yachts, you will know that they have swing keels. That means we can take the keel fully up or fully down. We have three or four different ways of doing this. The easiest option is always the control at the helm. However, after eight years, this has started to go a little bit haywire. I think some water's got into the circuitry, so I ordered a new part. So in my box of electronics that I need today, heat shrink. Pair of scissors for the heat shrink. Wire strippers, old school style. I don't like those ratchet strippers. Ratchet crimpers and assorted crimp terminals for the wires. 
today's job is simply to remove the existing slightly faulty keel control and wire a new one in. Wiring is relatively straightforward, the wires just need to be swapped over, but that involves stripping the wires, sealing them, soldering them and heat shrinking them back together so that we get no water ingress. Then it's simply a question of tying everything back up to the bulkheads, making sure everything works and doing some tests. After that we've got a perfectly new kill control and that should last us another eight years. Okay, moment of truth. Therese, turn the switch on. It's on. All right, excellent, we've got power. And I think we'll have you up there. That's the sound of the keel either going down or coming up. Coming up, I think. 2.2 meters, two meters. 1.8. That is why I will never buy a boat that doesn't have a lifting keel in a monohull. It is the most supremely useful feature you will ever find on a boat. Beautiful. We have a working panel again. How you doing? Well, I'm cleaning the toilet, so, you know. Well, I can stop you toilet cleaning for three zip ties and a pair of snips. One of the more glamorous sides of uh, living on a boat. Brush up, brush up, brush up. <laughs> <laughs> My little uh, sanctuary. Oh, the thing about electronics jobs on boats is that you never, you never know how they're going to pan out. Today's job, yeah, the keel works, and I'm pretty content. And it's only taken two hours. Tomorrow's job, as I said to Therese, is either going to take an hour or it will take two days, and that's mousing um, through the conduits, and the conduits are pretty jammed. So today, I'm going to call today a win. Um, everything tied up. Actually, while I'm in here, what I am going to do is check the Morse controls. Um, we know of more than one boat that has actually lost steering through um, a cotter pin that's gone. So you do need to make sure that you've got all your cotter pins uh, in place. I'm going to show you what that means actually. Sorry about the light. So it's really important when you get into your back of your boat just to check all these things. And we do this because I've had to be up here before. I mean, in the last season, this is the this is the bow thruster control. And again, these are all IP67, 68, whatever they are. That failed. Right. So we put a new one of those in. That's the computer. Autopilot. But things like this. I mean, this cotter pin just check all the pins and make sure that everything is in place nothing has come loose or worked loose so it's just a nice nice little additional check of all the systems on the boat anyway job done for today So what's our plans for today? Um, I want to get that radio handset redone. Right. Um, what's wrong with it? It's like the lead's broken again. This look, yeah, well, a couple of things happened. The lead's, it just the UV got to it. So the UV got to it. I phoned Garmin support, and actually Garmin support were really good. And I'm like, can I get? Because they always keep spares for all the stuff that you know they don't, you know, they don't sell now. Because that handset is is a different handset now. And they're like, oh, 
we've got one somewhere and they went rumbling around they're like yeah we'll send it to you i said how much is it they said oh then we'll just send it to you so they literally just sent me the whole it's like a couple of hundred quids worth of stuff okay so i want to get that put that needs to be um installed because it's a mousing job it takes two people so where do we mouse it from it has to go from that end to that end oh okay so it's underneath the um it's um, not underneath it's at, the, it's, it's at the it's the vhf radio but where is it where do we mouse it to you know where the vhf radio is babe oh right in, inside you mean yeah okay so what you have to do is you've got to take the old handset off the old command mic attach a, a mousing line to that command mic put it all the way through so you've got the mousing line in um in the cockpit mm. and then you put it all the way back yeah and putting it all the way back is a difficult thing i know, I know. all right what have we got today mm. yeah this coming yeah well this is going to be by the end of this is my resolve by the end of the week all this is sorted out it's not that far off actually it just looks worse than it is like we've done in a couple of hours okay this is today's fun and games we have a new remote mic for the boat so the cable split so there's a new cable and this is the fun and games for today this is the the problem is that the old remote mic didn't have a metal um, adapter mm. you had a plastic one yeah. and over the course of a couple of years this just all chipped away mm. and you see Garmin rectified this um, and reissued the cable with a metal flange but we've got the plastic one so this should be a case of just mousing this through but as I've said before mousing it's either an hour or two or it's a day or two Let's hope it's the first one, shall we? So another job for me and my head torch. I've got to find the little rat runs where the uh, this wire goes. Uh, I, I really hate these jobs. No, it's jammed. How far did you pull it? Well, I've got a lot of oil on it. Right, wait up. So the mousing run, we, you run a mousing line through. Now, you, some people would say, well, why don't you just tie the two cables together and pull them two together? You have to really sometimes, because there's so many like bends, you can't just attach a cable to a cable because you'll either end up damaging the cable or you'll end up d breaking the joint somewhere in the middle of the conduiting. And that is the last, that is the, really the last thing I want to do. So we've run this pink line through. That's the mousing line. That's the mousing line. Um, and then what we're going to do is cut it, reattach it, grease it, and then run it back through. So that's the old cable. And now we have the new cable. So I'm running it from here because it can't pull off from here. But the point is that this is going to catch. It's going to catch like hell. Yeah. So... The idea is to make it as as uh, resistance free as possible. Just going to smooth off any blunt edges on it using uh, insulating tape. And then are you going to put some Vaseline over it? Yeah, then I'm going to grease it. There's also a fine line between kind of like putting an end on this and then increasing the thickness past the point at which it becomes a constructive thing to do. Mm. Obviously, if we add like a couple of cent, you know, a couple of millimeters to the overall diameter, it's just going to be more difficult to get the thing to pass through. Yeah. So it's just about making a really nice, smooth, tapered cone. Then a liberal dab of Vaseline. And I've said this to you before, if ever you have dry lips, do not use this type of Vaseline. <laughs> this is used for the heads. For all sorts of stuff mostly for greasing aspects of the bloody those jabs goes no it's all right i've, I've got my own thank you ruby rose 2 will not be sponsored by jabs go <laughs> all right now i'm going downstairs to start yelling at stuff yeah
So, Alright, I'm letting go. It's jammed fast. It's jammed fast. You may be pulling it back again in a second. We got the, the cable through, I think, three 90 degree bends. Um, now just to re-lube it and do the like next part of the conduit. This is the conduit one that runs all the way under our heads. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's any jagged edges, but I don't want anything to jam here. Ready? Yeah. Put it to the chart table now. All right. There you go, my love. How'd you go? Yeah, one cable through. So is that done? Yep. Oh. Well, the cabling's done, I've got to fit it all. All right. Yep, we got, we got a new radio. What a lovely day this is. It's good to be back on the boat. Even if we do spend all our time doing boat work and Nick spends all his time in various lockers and I spend all my time fetching him things that he's lost. It's a really good feeling to be back. Nick, do you want to explain what you're doing in the locker again? Yeah, I'm just, uh, so, <laughs> now, zip ties. I've got to zip tie all the lines up to the bulkheads. All right. I, just, I literally need another arm. Why don't I go in there? bum's a bit bigger than yours. Right, inside there is a bundle of wires. Inside that hole. In here, underneath? Yeah, a big thing, they're all loose. Yeah. There is a zip tie that goes to a black thing, a little black holder. When you say a zip tie, do you mean a cable tie? A cable tie. And that black holder holds all the, all the ties to the bulkhead. Okay. All the cables to the bulkhead. Yeah. You need to, with one hand, yeah. pick up the cable ties. The cable ties? No, pick up all that, that bundle of wires. Yeah. Pass it to the zip tie and tighten the zip tie loosely. So I need to have. So there's like about ten wires. You need to collect them with one hand and put a cable tie around all yes, of them. Yes, but you have to keep the cable tie inside the black thing that's attached to the bulkhead. Can I have a head torch? Yes, you can have a head torch. I don't understand what he's trying to get me to do. <laughs> Show me I'm here where this cable tie is meant to be. Okay, I think I think I know what he's talking about. So the cable ties are actually open. Yeah, there's a little black square. Yeah, there's a little black square. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Put those wires into that cable tie and tie it up. Okay. All right. Now I'm with you. So it's that. I just did it. Hold well on. Do Yeah, because either you are like really incompetent, which I know that you're not, or I just did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I missed one. Is it what one? What colour's the one you missed? Black. One's okay. One's acceptable. It was coming from a different section. It's okay. I'll have a look at that. I'll have to get in and have a look back because I've got to put it all back together anyway. So. Oh, I don't think that I did it right because that was very easy. I thought you were talking about this bulkhead. Well, if you've done it, I'll be very pleased. No, I probably haven't because, as I said, it wasn't. You hard. probably have. Have faith in yourself. I do have faith in myself, but I don't have faith in your instructions. All right, any hop. Um, yeah. Yeah, what? Well, you missed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wires. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't know who liked to get all of them. 
Yeah, I think it was quite clear in those instructions all the while. You were extremely unclear in all the instructions. Well, I tried. I did a very good job of tying up about five wires when there was about ten to tie up. So I did a very good half a job. <laughs> It's lovely having fast internet on the boat. It's quite novel. Very unusual for us. So what do we have for dinner tonight? Mm. Soy burgers, grilled aubergine, eggplant to non. Non. Just non. non. <laughs> Aussies. And um, tabbouleh? Tabbouleh. Tzatziki. Tzatziki. Beautiful evening. Look at that sunset. Gorgeous. <sighs> Another day in La Rochelle. Done. See you tomorrow. Today, um, Nick is going up the mast, which I think it's fair to say is his least favourite job on the boat. There may be almighty bollocks of this at this end. And it wasn't pretty. And frankly, the less you saw of that, probably the better. I fell off the boat for the first time ever. Just fell off. Cheers, my love. <laughs> they are scrapping the rule where you have to stay within 100 kilometers of your primary residence. So we are free to cruise around uh, wherever we want to go along the French coast and that is such a relief to us. So that means that hopefully we can get going, get back to cruising. I know that we both want that very, very much. If you haven't already done so, please consider joining us on Patreon. In addition to early access to all our videos, there's a Patreon Facebook group, chat with us on our WhatsApp group, get Patreon only videos and live streams, and we also have a whole lot of Ruby Rose 2 news, crewing, and meetup opportunities. Otherwise, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below.